Lust is an intoxicating feeling. It goes beyond curiosity. It goes beyond passion. It is the type of feeling that embeds itself in you and doesn't leave. It is primal and ingrained in your DNA. You might be thinking, lust is just another word for sexual attraction, right? Not exactly. While we commonly associate lust with sex, there is more to it than just that. There are many kinds of lust and they all drive you to pursue one thing over another. If you relate to this, this video is not intended to demean or shame ourselves or others. Instead, its goal is to help us understand ourselves better, enabling us to recognize the origins of certain negative habits and increase our self-awareness. With that said, let's look at the different types of lust and we might just discover which one you have. Sexual lust. All forms of lust are more than just a general want for something. Lusting for something means longing for something, prioritizing it, and pursuing it. Sexual lust is more than just wanting sex or being sexually attracted to someone. It is the intense longing for sexual gratification. Instead of wanting sex as a form of intimacy with one person, sexual lust can make you seek sexual gratification with as many people or as often as you possibly can. This can become hypersexuality, which can be, at least partially, responsible for problematic sexual activity like cheating. If your greatest lust is for sex, you may struggle to maintain relationships despite always being involved with people. Emotional lust. If you long for emotional connections and intimacy just for the sake of it, you might have emotional lust. You might like the idea of falling in love, but not truly loving someone for who they are. You may want to fall in love without having a specific person in mind. Usually love comes to us after we meet someone, but for people with emotional lust, the feelings are the priority and they can be projected onto anyone. Some people often find it easy to get caught up in the idea of falling in love because it seems exciting and perfect. It's like imagining a fairy tale where everything is romantic and magical. If you find yourself falling in love with everyone you meet, you might have emotional lust. Power lust. Nobody likes to feel small or insignificant. In groups of people, we like to know that we have a purpose and a reason for being there. For others, that isn't enough. If you have a lust for power, you probably see people as a means to an end. They're a resource. If you don't see potential friendships in people, but rather contacts and acquaintances that can get you ahead in life. This doesn't mean you can't have friendships at all, but letting go of toxic friendships may be more difficult if you think keeping them around could hold an advantage. You always have a goal in mind and take charge when you can. You like your ideas to be heard and you do what you can to make sure that everyone follows through. This on its own doesn't make you a bad person as control and order are often helpful and necessary in group situations. But being ignorant of the needs of others and pursuing your own goals might expose your lust for power. Remember, wanting to lead isn't enough to make you a good leader. Material lust. We all have felt the sting of jealousy when someone is something that we want. That can inspire a burning lust for material possessions in you. Material lust can cover anything like wanting the nicest clothes, the nicest car, a large house, or even just being extremely wealthy. If you have material lust, you're looking for the extremes. You don't just want to live comfortably and not having to worry about rent for a month. You want bigger, better, newer, and shinier things. A person with material lust isn't necessarily someone who already has the means to acquire nice things. People from poor backgrounds who have an ideal life in their minds that involve being super wealthy are also capable of developing material lust. No matter what your background is, pursuing material possessions and wealth probably won't make life more satisfying. According to a study by psychologist Dr. Joanne Sang and colleagues, increased materialism can predict lower life satisfaction. There's nothing wrong with having nice things, but keeping your life varied and drawing happiness from more than just material things can make life feel more fulfilling. Intellectual lust. Nobody knows everything. There's no grand wizard in a mountaintop surrounded by books that can tell you everything about everything. Some people want to be that wizard. If you love to show off your knowledge and prove how intelligent you are at any chance you get, you probably have an intellectual lust. You like to debate, you like to overcome intellectual obstacles, and you enjoy taking on intellectual challenges. This can be great if used with respect and empathy, knowing that there's always someone who knows more about something than you, and that's okay. This means there's always something to learn from each other. Intellectual arrogance is what happens when intelligence is treated like material possessions or they're something to be flaunted and not shared. If a narcissistic person finds themselves with an intellectual lust, they'll be sure to make that clear to you. Encouraging careful thought and learning is fantastic, but trying to make someone else feel stupid is cold and largely pointless, aside from the ego boost it gives you. Spiritual lust. 
Enlightenment is a noble pursuit. Spirituality is vital for a lot of people, helping them find fulfillment and meaning in their lives. A spiritual lust can be a wholesome guide for your life, but as we've learned over the course of this video, everything is better in moderation. Spiritual lust refers to a strong desire or craving for spiritual growth, enlightenment, or connection with the divine. But excessive spiritual lust can be detrimental, as it makes you fixate on your spiritual experiences or achievements, potentially overshadowing genuine spiritual growth and inner peace. It can lead you to places that don't help you as much as you think they should. If you never feel like your spiritual lust is being satiated, you could be led to more extreme, fringe, or harmful beliefs in pursuit of finding more spirituality to explore. There's nothing wrong with having a passion for what you believe and wanting to learn and be involved with your faith. Spiritual lust can make you feel like you are never settled with your beliefs. It can also lead you down the path of becoming an extremist. Religious extremism is directly related to spiritual life because it reflects the commitment to a goal or a pursuit of greater spiritual standing. Religious extremism doesn't always lead to violence, but it can lead to some extreme behavior which can alienate people rather than inspire them to pursue faith as you have chosen to do. Having a passion and a goal for life can be great for your sense of fulfillment and purpose. If your lust for something takes over your life and becomes an obsession, it might be time to consider if there is room in your life for other aspirations, other relationships, and other paths to happiness. Let us know what kind of lust you have in the comments below. Has it helped you or harmed you? If you found this video helpful or informative, remember to leave a like and subscribe to Psych2Go for more videos like this. See you next time.